think before you kind of get into it, you kind of feel like everyone has their shit together. Um, that's not the case. My name is Aji Ayurande, um, sometimes known as Ajibala Josiah. My brand is MIA London. I met this tailor whilst I was in South Africa, um, kind of worked him with a few ideas and things for things for myself. And I was just like, really, really impressed by his ability to bring those ideas to life. That then was extrapolated into kind of like a first collection, I guess, which I brought back to the UK. And then from there, it's just been a constant process of like, you know, iteration, change of things along the way, learning more and more things. And like I was saying to you, you know, before, like I'm only now at the point where like I feel completely confident calling myself a designer. I feel like it's a constant process, like you're always learning. And you don't want to be too quick to claim any particular title because with that title there's like responsibility and expectation. So now I feel like I've kind of like done enough work, put in the hours to enough of an extent that I can call myself a designer even though I'm still learning. The way that I define MIA is like, probably like on the premium side, a blend of like luxury and minimalism. Like even the stuff that we do that's more, uh, that there's more going on with, there's still that element of like minimalism. That attention to detail is something that we really we really, really take ourselves seriously on. So the ethos and vision behind MIA is to empower African-based tailors and African-inspired tailoring. So we do that through collaborations with uh, designers who are based on the continent who brand themselves as tailors. We do that through um, Kind of blending like tailored formal wear, tailored street wear in a way that's modern and accessible and trendy and yeah I guess like we want to get to the point at which we can really help to put African fashion on the map. So MIA officially stands for Made in Africa but the reason why we chose the name is because there's so many other meanings and uses to the word or to the phrase or acronym MIA. So it just allows us to like play on things like missing in action, like we did with our first ever show that we did, um, and, and so on and so forth. So the name really just kind of like represented who we are, what we're trying to portray. But like I said, doing it in a more like trendy and modern and contemporary way. So my inspirations for me were the two people that kind of I had in mind when the brand was being created. Kind of thought to myself, discussed with our head tailor, who would we want in an ideal world to like know about our brand and to value our stuff. And those two people were Oswald Boateng and Tiny Temper, which just felt like those two people kind of fit as like characters or like client personas of the kind of people that we would like to dress and the kind of people that we feel like represents our brand. Like you have the full spectrum from the the tailored formal wear that Oswald Boateng kind of, you know, represents and brings to life to someone like Tiny Temp who does dress very well. And, but there's still that kind of like well-fitted element to anything that he does wear. So they were the two people that kind of I had in mind when the brand was being created. And fortunately enough, like I've had the opportunity to have conversations with both of these people. I never went to design school and I wouldn't go as far as saying it's necessary, but what I would say is that it is necessary to upskill yourself in other ways, whether it's through like practical experience. Um, me personally, I've been doing a lot of workshops recently because like you never stop learning because I didn't have that like design school experience. There are a few gaps in kind of like my knowledge and in my skill set which I've been like working on. So I guess like going to design school may give you that kind of um, overarching understanding of things, but it can't replace the practical experience that you learn. 
So it just depends on what kind of route or path works for you. Um, for some people, just being more hands on from the get go and then going back to like filling the gaps and then upskilling themselves in that way, that works as, as will do for me. But then for other people, kind of being guided along the way is the better way to go about things. I think before you kind of get into it, you kind of feel like everyone has their shit together. Um, that's not the case. Like even the most like professional of people, you'll see that they're kind of making things up as they kind of go along. And that in itself does kind of provide some sort of comfort in the sense that it kind of humanizes people. It kind of makes things like more achievable to you. And for me, yeah, it was kind of like motivation just seeing people like right before going on TV, um, they, they're like, oh, like this, they're just stressing out a bit, like trying to like get things together, gather a piece of information together. And I think that's kind of like the, an ability that a lot of people in these spaces have. Like when it comes to the time to perform, they, they step up and they perform. I think the hardest part of what I do is, I guess the things that you don't know how to do before you do them or not knowing who necessarily to go to before you do it. So it may be a case of, okay, you have this great idea, you want to bring it to life and you want to get X person involved to bring it to life, but you don't have a direct contact with that person. It's, that's the hardest thing, I think, like having to like sometimes be realistic about ideas and I guess like having sometimes the kill ideas because it's not possible or practical in, in reality. That's probably the hardest thing. And I feel like it's a case of like you learn as you go along, you build your network as you go along, you upskill as you go along, and you get to a point where most things that you want to create conceptually like you, you can do or you know how to go about doing it and that through that that's where like you have real like power is that knowledge and that network you can't substitute the hard work like and don't don't run before you can walk like we've had to Kind of like be out there and then at times pull ourselves back to like allow other elements to catch up if that makes sense and what that can potentially do is to like hold momentum what you really want in an ideal world is when you go out to the world like you're completely ready and from there things can just build and build and build so yeah just kind of like do the groundwork up front i'd say or as much of it as you can so get our next collection out by september by final for this um and doing it through our bespoke new fashion show um yeah that's the next thing i'm just kind of seeing like more just us like expressing our creativity more and more I think. That's what I'd say. Do like do like new concepts, new ways of designing, like new methods that we learn in. You'll see a difference basically. But like not so different that it doesn't look like a home.